Last night I went down this rabbit hole of listening to the band Wasp and it was very traumatizing. Doing a, uh, a hammerhead sports kind of messed up, but I think it'll work. This is a Cthulhu uh -huh, trash can. You guys will see once it's done. This is a custom uh, Raptor statue project for somebody. You don't really see too much here, but yeah, they're Raptors. Velociraptor. So Frankenstein's giving us weird fits again. It printed this alien about perfectly, but it just started doing the thing where the extruder is just not extruding, even though it is printing. I don't know why it would do that, but I've reprinted and it started working, so I don't know. Last night I didn't quite have enough uh, filament, so I had to use the question mark filament, and the question mark filament broke. This guitar snake is printing, I think, totally perfectly, so that's good. I'm not sure if it's gonna be today, but we've got a special project that is going to be really useful. And that project is, we're gonna set up a second filament extrusion system. I have three of these and I have two of those. And I believe that I've gained enough expertise in how to get them to work consistently that we can make a second one, which will go here. And you might be able to tell from this old waterbed thing that there actually used to be a second system here. The reason being is I am selling an insane amount of stuff. I'm selling enough stuff that it's like, I might have to shut down the shop. Might have to shut down the online selling shops, the selling stores, let's say if it just keeps up like this, because I have to build out more infrastructure. I probably have enough printers for the small stuff. I'm sure a lot of you have thought like, why aren't all these printers, like why do you have all these printers and only a few of them are printing? The reason is because there are times where you just need a lot of printers. Like every Christmas it's mul you know, it's almost like inevitably mid five figures in 30 days. This is how many printers you need in order to service that. However, I don't have that many of the big printers and this Creality S5, and this is sort of one, and these two are those as well. They stopped manufacturing them. They actually stopped manufacturing them like right after I started using them, which sucks. So I'm looking into alternatives. So far, the alternatives suck. You may have caught a glimpse of these two. Both of these are Tronxy, uh, I think it's called S XS5A500s. I think that's what they're called. If you ever really, really hate money, buy one of these. Tronxy printers, at least these ones, suck. They suck so bad. A lot of the scrap that you've seen out here was just like, you have to print three or four things to get one thing to maybe work sometimes. On top of that, these are highly modified. Like I'm using a Creality box to heat the hot end and that sort of works, but like, I cannot emphasize this enough. Everything, everything about these printers sucks. I, you almost couldn't make a worse printer. Like this is how the X and Y axes work with these belts, which sort of works, but like these belts just wear out, which is like why you don't do that. I mean, my other printers use belts, but they don't use this complex like pulley system, which just makes them wear out. The other thing is weird heating issues. I built this like giant enclosure. This is designed by me to fit over the hot end so that I could fit a giant, giant fan to cool that thing off. And it still like messes up. 
The point of this segment is I would love to be able to just buy these, but they do not work anywhere consistently enough. And the thing is, I used these things for like a year. It's not like, oh, I only tried a couple things or there's something I didn't think of. Like these printers suck. They are hell on earth. If anybody wondered about the origin of Frankenstein here, it's because those printers suck. This is sort of an S5. It's, it's the frame of an S5 and a bed that's the size of an S5 combined with two other boxes and a uh, bed powering thing. Basically, this is an amalgam of like three or four different printers. It's a little weird, but it basically works. And there's some custom G-code stuff you have to do, which is not fun, but once you get it done, it's not that big a deal. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is build more Frankensteins. The trouble with building more Frankensteins is that frame kit is something I bought that doesn't exist anymore. Like it's an S, it's a Creality S5 frame kit and nobody makes that anymore, which means I'm gonna have to buy this stuff and either cut it to size. I probably won't have to cut it to size, but one thing I'll have to do is actually tap these holes because when you buy these, they're not threaded. In other words, you can't put screws into them. What you have to do is actually put screw threads, bolt threads in there. I've never done that before. And the danger is if you screw it up, you've ruined the entire piece, potentially. I mean, it stands to reason. And I'm not sure how easy that is. I've seen tutorial videos of people threading but I don't know. It's doable and we're, that's what we're gonna try in all likelihood. Anyway, of course, the reason I'm doing all this is because sales are going crazy and I just have to be able to make more, more big things. Like I think the amount of orders I have, I can handle, but if it keeps up, especially if it increases and especially when it comes Christmas time, I'm definitely not gonna be able to make enough stuff. I think the best solution I've come up with is this. This is a 500 uh, cubic print area 3D printer by Wanhao. I used Wanhao printers really early on and they were okay, but they just weren't, they weren't amazing, but I know how to work on them. Although this is very different. I used Wanhao i3s if I remember right. But I think we're gonna take a chance and just get one. I tried to read reviews online and I found very, very little. This doesn't seem to be a very popular printer, but um, I don't think there's really a better option. It's using some parts that look pretty familiar to me and I feel fairly confident that I could work on it, but I don't know. This is just taking a chance. I don't really have a better option. There's almost nothing that can print this big. Nobody does this. We're gonna get into some kind of normal business stuff again, but uh, I think we're going to go the Frankenstein route. For some reason, it wasn't letting me buy that other printer and there was nowhere else that was. Actually, there was one that maybe was going to, but I had to message them because it, did, it didn't seem very ret reputable. Anyway, I think we're gonna just build some printers. This is a tap set. This is what you use to, um, you know, make a space that you can screw bolts into. And uh, this is what we're gonna use. This is the only thing I really need other than the materials to build another printer. Holy crap. Somebody just bought a orange coffee and a full burger. That's just one order. Astute viewers may have noticed these two things being here the whole time. That is tomato and lettuce. The last person that ordered a burger ordered it without tomato and lettuce. 
The burger is the most ambitious thing I have ever 3D printed. I'll probably make it the thumbnail of this video. It is a giant freaking burger. It takes a week and a half to print, total print time. Although it'll be less because I already have two of the elements made. Man, things are getting serious around here. I don't know if this will be of interest to anybody, but this, if you are making the parts for one of these printers, this is what you need. You need six of these, 700 millimeter, 2040 extrusion. Then I need three 600 millimeter, 2020 extrusion. And this is for the extruder bar. It measured at 620. I don't know how I'm gonna get that specific size. It can be larger, theoretically, but we need one of those too. So I guess I'm gonna try to find these. I don't know if I said this already, but when I made Frankenstein, I bought a pre-cut, pre-made um, frame kit, and that is not available anymore. So we are just gonna put a frame together ourselves. So I ordered all of the frame parts that I'm gonna need for one printer. I'm probably gonna really need to put together a couple more printers. But for the control board, we've actually got this. This is an old CR-10S. It's being sold for parts, but it's very unlikely that, um, that the board has gone wrong. Like of all the things to go wrong with the printer, the board going out is extremely rare. It does happen. But uh, I made an offer for two of these because they have like 10 of them for sale. And I made an offer for two of them for 200 total. I feel like they're gonna go for it. Um, I mean, nobody buys broken printers. They're just sitting around. It's actually way cheaper. The boards are very hard to find. And if you do, you're probably gonna pay over a hundred. So I'm getting them for less than a hundred a piece. Or I, I did like 190 for the whole thing. I'm getting them less for 100 a piece, plus I get all these spare parts. So that should be pretty good. Hopefully they do it. They accepted the offer for the two CR10 Pros, I think is what that is. They have the boards I need, which I probably would have had to pay at least $100 a piece for. I got these two for $190. So that's pretty good. The other advantage is there's a lot of little pieces and parts, like brackets and things, that some of which I have, some I don't have, but this is going to have, I think, all of the ones, all of the little parts I need in order to build one more Frankenstein, and I've got two of these coming, so I can build two more Frankensteins. I need to get packaging pretty soon, but we're getting a couple more printers back in the game. Fixed the hot end on this guy. It had actually been swapped out for a different one. But uh, the way things are going, we're gonna need most of these printers to be like up and running. All right, uh, we're actually needing to go get a drill press. The reason is because you'll notice with a lot of these extruded parts, they have these uh, places where you hook different things into them. That's not just part of it. Like you have to drill those holes if you're ordering the raw parts. And you can do that with a drill, you know, but they have to be in exactly the right spot. And really the tool for that is a drill press. I ran a little, there's this guy who invented remote unlocking mechanisms for cars in the, in the late eighties, I think. And I kind of sort of ran his business for a while. I was like the manager sort of and um we used to drill press a lot for some of the stuff he would sell and he did prototyping as well so anyway i'm getting a drill press for 50 bucks off of facebook marketplace so let's go let's get this drill all right we're about to make this happen out in the middle of nowhere Yo, I had to drive like over an hour to get this, but it was only 50 bucks and it actually freaking works. So that's nice. Of course, we had to hit a big old monsoon on the way out here. I have seen the future and the future is plastic. 
I have seen things you wouldn't believe. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere at an HEB, sort of. There we go. Getting gas. And they have these cool digital screens here. I haven't seen that before. But we're gonna do some work when we get back to the shop. But this is probably a good place to end the video. Today, I'm grateful for getting a drill press for 50 bucks for my sales pretty much quintupling at this point. And the fact that I do have a lot of printers and I know how to put together printers, so this isn't gonna totally screw me, probably. And I'm grateful that I am mostly healthy and that I am losing weight. So tell me in the comments what you're grateful for. Peace out.